Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Get Out. Talking about race and social issues and horror is nothing new, really. But most of the time when the other horror masters have done it before, they do it in a sneaky way. Having zombies represent something and being able to say something greater than your audience who's just there for the scares and the gore, probably expected. Letting the subtext be there to say something about a social issue while everyone is enjoying the text. And Jordan Peele's film Get Out does both those things, but in a lot of ways you cannot disregard the subtext. And he does it just as those masters understood the horror genre Jordan Peele does as well, using various tropes and ideas from the horror genre and the slasher genre to say something about race. From Trayvon Martin to Freddie Gray to Eric Garner are all in here, as well as kind of the idea of John Carpenter's Halloween and being stalked at night and taking out just for the randomness because you're different, which very much plays into already established horror dynamics. Jordan Peele is very smart in what he's doing with the horror genre and with Get Out and making you feel as uncomfortable as you are scared. There's a lot that reminds me of kind of the cringe comedy of the 2000s and how uncomfortable it is to watch. Honestly, I had a hard time watching certain sections because it was so cringy. Much cringier than I think a lot of those were doing, but there's also a very much an honesty in that. Suburbia is a very scary place, and white people's inability to recognize the racial issues that are going on because they voted for Obama and probably would do it a third term are one of the many things to be scared of. Oftentimes with horror, what we fear is what we don't understand, and maybe what we don't understand with Get Out is why these people don't really realize what they're actually doing. But Jordan Peele actually has even more in there, both doing a successful statement on race and making an incredibly good genre horror film. It shows how much of a promising horror filmmaker and a filmmaker in general he really is. Chris, a up-and-coming photographer played by Daniel Kaluuya, who's dating a college student, Rose, and they're preparing to go on a trip to visit her family for the first time in an affluent white suburban neighborhood. Her parents, even though are considered liberals, he's still a little nervous that they don't know he's black. Black. Although they're very open-minded, supposedly, and like to talk about very liberal things, he still notices, you know, the various terms they use, and I guess microaggressions, particularly when dealing with their friends, and feeling like there's maybe something going on, particularly with Rose's hypnotist mom, played by Catherine Keener. Chris becomes more and more worried as he sees the black maid and caretaker they have, and the few black people who are in the neighborhood look very tone-deaf and not like black people at all, and he's wondering what exactly is going on as he keeps getting creepy down and wondering what's exactly going on in this crazy suburban neighborhood and should he get out before it gets him as well. Jordan Peele really comes out as a genre filmmaker. First and foremost, honestly, it's kind of interesting he comes from comedy to do horror filmmaking. And although I think Key and Peele's sketches used a lot of film genre and ideas in film genre in there, those were more directed by Peter Antasio, who also directed last year's Keanu, but clearly Jordan Peele had some creative involvement in that. And um, you can definitely tell this is the same guy from that but what's interesting is you have a lot of comedian filmmakers kind of emulating different styles you look at the guys from documentary now you look at what the lonely island guys did in pop star and they actually have to master these genres to make fun of them but i think jordan peele's the only one who went to the other side and actually made a straight horror movie understanding those tropes a lot of people bring up edgar wright with jordan peele's direction because they're looked at as comedies who kind of use genre tropes but i would say what jordan peele's doing is actually just making a genre film that has like his trademark humor in it. I mean, he wrote this film as well. You can tell certain jokes are very much like Jordan Peele kind of jokes, or the jokes we know from Keen Peele. I don't know if I know him as well solo as from this one, but you definitely feel that going throughout, it. and it's very much a genre film with humor in it. I don't think he has the references to certainly do what Edgar Wright does, or even Tarantino does, where you see them, you know, using their encyclopedic knowledge of film to really say something about the genre. I think what he's doing is having a genre film say something about a social issue, and that's really, really interesting and really smart. It shows Jordan Peele understands all those underlying aspects of horror films, and it shows a very smart, intelligent horror filmmaker, really. And he has even an added element of surrealism in here that I don't think anyone will appreciate as much, and even references to being John Malkovich. This is kind of a Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, Stepford Wives hybrid, basically. But I think, um, although it does kind of use the ideas that um, Ira Levin, who wrote Stepford Wives and Rosemary's Baby, and the whole idea of you're not exactly in on what these people are doing to your life and 
I think that's an interesting concept for part of it, but when that veil gets revealed, it doesn't become weaker. Usually that's the least interesting part of it. It almost makes it scarier and less understandable. He's very smart at understanding what is scary and how to get tone to work in this. Using those references, particularly with like the Stepford Wives and the Ira Levin thing, is smart because I've always liked that idea of horror, this idea that like kind of a paranoid fantasy that everyone's against you, but in the idea that they actually are. And white suburbia is very scary. If you've ever walked around suburbia at night, I've done it a few times, a little loaded, it can just freak you out just because it's so quiet. There's nothing going on. I remember just visiting my parents' home and just coming from a friend's house and like racing home, just being terrified because it is scary. And there's an opening shot that really reminds me of kind of the opening of It Follows, which is very much a Carpenter reference. And it is very much a Carpenter reference, but instead of using the idea of just young teenage girl being scared by a killer, it's a black guy being scared that, you know, some white person is going to shoot him or arrest him, a la Trayvon Martin, which I think is very smart and very 2016 or 2017 or whatever. I also like the idea that I think a white suburban upper class people do look at it like, you know, because of our ideas, because of their open mindedness, racism doesn't exist or it doesn't exist here. And it probably would have been a lot easier to use more of a conservative family and, uh, you know, people who voted for Trump or people who outwardly are a little more racist. And I think the idea of upper class liberal white people being shown as the villain, I think is first off their worst fucking nightmare, but also a really cutting and really smart because I've noticed so many white liberals will say things like, oh, that's area is sketchy. And I'm like, do you mean you mean that black people live there, right? And they're like, no, no, I don't, don't, don't say that. It's not that. And I'm like, mm, it is that though. I think Jordan Peele is looking at that in a way and looking at conversations that we often don't want to talk about how we deal with race and how a lot of these issues are still going on. And if you don't think race has a lot to do with your life, you're not really examining it in the right way, particularly the kind of white privilege of suburbia and the kind of scariness of that. You know, people will often be scared in movies to be in the city and the urban environment, but then you look at a film like Get Out and makes suburbia look even scarier, much scarier than that can ever be. Although I think most of the people who this film is talking about will never see a film like Get Out, which is kind of the other thing about it, which is so funny. One of the things that is interesting about it is it's made in such a cheaper kind of genre way, like in the late 80s, like specifically the opening credits, other than the title Get Out, which is done in a very modern way. All the other titles feel like a universal film from the late 80s. And a lot of the cuts and the way the camera moves, it feels like like that so much so that it felt like the style parody kind of things like it was so exact it was a little crazy and particularly with the music by michael abels i believe who did an amazing job like it didn't feel like it was ripping off anyone but it felt like such a horror score and it felt evoking such horror scores that i felt like i had maybe heard it in another genre film which is kind of amazing frankly you know how good he was at like melding with the genre and playing with it i think jordan Peele is really smart and the fact that like for the most part it plays like like a genre film and he uses that genre he's like a very smart artist using that genre to say something more and he knows how to play like he could do a straight horror film and he could do a film of that race and melding them together to make something like truly unique and different the way it felt so 80s it was really weird it felt like a film i should be watching by myself that no one's heard of because it makes most people uncomfortable not a film at the multiplex but this is a multiplex horror film i like that jason blum is really expanding multiplex horror in ways that no one else is even trying to do from bringing back M. Night which debatable if that's good or not but he's finding directors that no one else will really make horror films with and the fact that he's brought Jordan Peele a guy primarily known for comedy and letting him do a horror film kind of opens me up particularly with someone like Danny McBride trying to do a Halloween film I think that might be a better place to go like it used to be outsiders for horror movies was usually kind of a bad thing it was not something you really wanted to do with a horror movie you didn't want an outsider because they didn't understand the genre but Jordan Peele obviously very much does and it's a welcome change for horror, particularly multiplex horror, because I don't think they have anyone really as promising as Jordan Peele has shown throughout this film. Daniel Kaluuya, who does a really great job, he's kind of does an unsung performance, kind of one of those things that holds the film together, one of those horror protagonist things that, um, you know, if they make a get out to, which I don't think they will, and he wasn't there, it wouldn't feel the same. He's kind of the glue holding everything together, and he's very good. I didn't know he was the guy from that Black Mirror episode until I got home, and was in Sicario as well. This is the first time I've liked Allison Williams in, frankly, anything, and 
and she uses her kind of white girlness in probably the best way she's ever used it. I might like her more in this than in Girls, and I think she knows what she's doing with her performance more. Jordan Peele uses her like a good director knows how to use what an actor is representing and presenting, much like James Cameron with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and same with Allison Williams and Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele knows how to use her strengths and weaknesses to his advantage, and she's really quite good. I love that Bradley Whitford has like a horror filmography, and I actually think he's one of my favorite horror actors. I wish he'd do more horror stuff between this and Cabin in the Woods. You know, you wouldn't look at Bradley Whitford and think horror actor, but I think what makes him so good, and particularly all the older character actors, Catherine Keener, who's always amazing. I love seeing Catherine Keener in this. Steven Root, who is an amazing voice actor, and I didn't even know he was in this, and right when I saw him, I was like, oh my god, I love this movie even more. I like when horror movies get interesting character actors to play kind of smaller parts, particularly character actors who I don't think you'd expect in something like this, but they really, like, bring out. Catherine Keener really, like, I think embodies that kind of white liberalness, like that Whole Foods kind of a thing, and uh, I think she's very good at and the hypnotist parts are just fucking creepy as shit. I like Keith Stanfield, who's from Atlanta, Betty Gabriel, who plays the uh, maid in this film, but I also really like uh, Lil Rel Howery, who plays kind of Rod, his friend, who's kind of the comic relief throughout this film. It's worked so well because I heard Jordan Peele say he's like, when you're seeing a film, he's like, don't go in there, don't go in the house, don't go in the basement. Like, there's always that person saying that when you see a horror movie, and he's like the audience surrogate for that, but he almost like cuts the tension in the perfect way, and he's really funny. And it's interesting, this film directed by Jordan Peele, who's often been the comic relief in various films, he knows how to perfectly use comic relief within a genre. I think says a lot. Comic relief in a film that's not necessarily comic usually fails more than it works, but in this it really works because he knows how to play it and bring it in in certain sections and kind of bring levity to certain things. Certainly you could cut him out of the whole movie, but I think this film would be worse for it, which you can't say for a lot of comic relief. Get Out works as a perfect genre horror film. It also works as a real statement about racism in America and really pointed in a time of Trump's America where everyone can say, oh, I voted for Hillary, so. And the fact of racism that's often unsaid, and I think that's kind of what makes Get Out so cutting, but it also shows Jordan Peele as a great genre filmmaker, probably greater than anyone probably expected. I love really what he does here. I love how scary it was. I liked how uncomfortable it was. I liked how he uses all these ebbs and flows to really make kind of one of the more interesting and amazing horror films to come out in a long time and one that absolutely says something. I think a lot of horror directors, they do it in a way, they hide it in there, but Jordan Peele seems to not be afraid of that. That might not be a great instinct later on or something, but I think for this film and for right now, it really works. You know, he doesn't go too preachy on it, and he stays within the genre in certain ways that you could watch this as a straight horror film. He knows what he's doing with that genre and saying with that genre to say something about racism, really, and racism in suburbia. It cuts so close, apparently, at a Sundance screening, he actually said this is not a about my in-laws. <laughs> Going to an in-law's house in kind of a whiter liberal uh, suburb, it can feel scary and things, and it plays under that too, although I don't think I've had the same experience as Jordan Peele has, frankly. I really enjoy this film. I really like what it's saying. I think it might make white people very uncomfortable and might make them uncomfortable as to what it's saying about, you know, more liberal white people, but I don't think those people honestly will most likely see this because they're not going to see most horror things anyway. But for the horror connoisseurs, which this film cares more about than anything, honestly, in its making, it works very well, and it's one of the more interesting and fun horror movies to come along in the multiplex sense in a while. Multiplex horror doesn't get this good and interesting anymore. Weirder and odder horror usually gets buried, or it's like The Witch, which was like surprising in itself. I like what horror is really doing and expanding in interesting ways right now, and Get Out goes into that as well as, as most interesting horror has currently, but it's probably the most genre of all of them. It's probably more genre than it follows. It's really like playing within the horror genre and that's kind of what makes it so scary because all of this applies so well to all of that and only a real great horror director and a real great genre director would know how to use genre and use the tropes and use those ideas that have been placed in tons and tons of movies to really say something with those genres and play those notes perfectly he wants to play it as a great genre director does but a great genre director always tries to say more and he makes that subtext that would be in either everything from dawn of the dead to carpenter's things from they live to even something like Zootopia and throws it in your face while also scaring the shit out of you. So if you have seen Get Out and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.